We are now going to look at two examples where tunneling, where we will apply this tunneling probability. One example is going to be related to our everyday experiences, and the other one is going to be related to um, quantum particles. So here, this is the example of our everyday experience, where pretend I have a truck that's a 2,000 kilogram mass truck traveling at about 1.39 meters per second, and it's coming towards a square speed bump, which I have written down just right here, where the speed bump is about 0.1 meters across and about 0.1 meters high. And so we have to just define first what is the energy of the potential and what is the energy of our vehicle. So the energy of our potential, well that just represents the potential energy to lift the truck 0.1 meters. And so since the truck is 2,000 kilograms, I multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity, and I multiply it by the 0.1 meters. I end up with a potential energy of that barrier of being 1,960 joules. We also need to find the energy of the truck. Well, that's just purely kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. It's 1 half times 2,000 times 1.39 squared. So the energy of the truck is 1,932.1 joules. So as you can see, the energy or the truck has insufficient energy to overcome this speed bump just on its own. So we're going to calculate what is the probability of the truck tunneling through this barrier and essentially appearing on the other side of the barrier. First, we're going to ca calculate kappa. Kappa was equal to 2m u naught minus e all under a square divided by h bar. So kappa is equal to 2 times 2,000 times 1,960 minus 1,932.1 all underneath the square root divided by h bar which is 1.055 times 10 to the minus 34. So in this case we're going to get a kappa that's equal to 3.1665 times 10 to the 36. So this is an absolutely humongous number. What we're going to do now is we're going to plug this number into the transmission probability that we were given previously. And so that value is going to be t is equal to, and I'm just going to start by writing the denominator out a little bit, e kappa a minus e to the negative kappa a squared divided by 4 times e over u naught times 1 minus e over u naught. I've got my 1 plus divided by 1. And at this point I'm going to be focusing on these e raised to the kappa a's because the values that I'm going to put in here essentially ends this calculation, and it's essentially I've got this e raised to the power of 3.1665 times 10 to the 36 times 0 0.1 minus e to the negative 3.1665 times 10 to the 36 times 0 0.1. This value is going to be squared. I'm dividing that by 4 times e is 1932.1 divided by 1960. I have 1 minus 1932.1 divided by 1960. 1 plus, take the inverse. And so what I want to point out is that what we have here is we have a term e raised to the power of 3.1665 times 10 to the 35, which is an absolutely humongous number and is going to dominate all the other numbers inside this denominator, no matter what. It's the biggest number that's going to be there. And so what we really end up with here is a calculation, and even if you try to stick that number in your calculator, you'll probably get an error. And so what you end up getting is 1 divided by a very big number. which means that our transmission probability is essentially equal to zero. And that's something that we would expect. We wouldn't expect in our everyday lives 
to see a truck tunnel through a speed bump, which is essentially what this problem is set up. If the truck doesn't have the energy to overcome it, there is essentially zero chance that we will see it overcome that barrier. This brings us to our second example, which is where we're going to examine a quantum particle, in this case an electron, which is moving towards a barrier that is one angstrom wide, and it is a barrier height of 8.0109 times 10 to the minus 18 joules in height, and this electron is traveling at 1% the speed of light. So here again we start with the same two pieces that we started or that we found with the truck example. In this case we already know the barrier height, 8.0109 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. We have to find the kinetic energy of our particle, 1 half mv squared. In this case we've got 1 half, the mass of the electron is 9.109 .09 times 10 to the minus 31. The speed of the particle, that's 0 0.01 times the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8, and all that is squared, so that gives us an energy of 4.09 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. The next thing we'll calculate is kappa. Kappa is equal to 2m u naught minus e, all under a square root, divided by h bar. Well, subbing in numbers, we have 2 times the mass of the electron, 9.109 .09 times 10 to the minus 31 times u naught, which was 8.0109 times 10 to the minus 18. I'm going to subtract off 4.09 times 10 to the minus 18. Put that all under a square root. Divide that by 1.055. times 10 to the minus 34. And so in the end I get a number which is 2.53 times 10 to the 10. Now again, this number actually is still very big, but as we'll see, that isn't very critical, and it's specifically because of the barrier width. So let's determine the tunneling probability of this electron moving through this barrier. So T is equal to and again, I'll write the denominator first, e kappa a minus e to the negative kappa a, all squared, divided by 4 times e over u naught, times 1 minus e over u naught. I have 1 plus all that, and then I take the inverse of it. So let's substitute in numbers now. Again, starting with the e, the kappa a. So we've got e to the power of 2.53 times 10 to the 10, but that I'm going to be multiplying by 1 times 10 to the minus 10. That I'm going to subtract off e to the negative 2.53 times 10 to the 10, and that I'm multiplying again by 1 times 10 to the minus 10, which is an angstrom. All that is squared, I'm going to divide all that by 4 times the energy of the particle is 4.09 times 10 to the minus 18. Divide that by the potential height, 8.0109 times 10 to the minus 18. And then I have 1 minus 4.09 times 10 to the minus 18 divided by 8.0109 times 10 to the minus 18. 1 plus and we're taking the inverse of that large number. What we end up with at this point, we get t is equal to, well, we have e to the power of 2.53 minus e to the negative 2.53. That number is squared. On the bottom, we have 4 times 0 0.51 times 0 0.49. We have 1 plus take the inverse of that number, we keep simplifying, t is equal to, I have 155.6 divided by 1.0007, 1 plus inverse, and so in the end we get t is equal to 0 0.0064, or about 0.64%.
which is quite an astonishing number if you think about it, because it means that if I have a stream of electrons that are moving towards a barrier of that height, they don't individually have the energy to overcome that barrier just through their kinetic energy, but about at a rate of about one in every 200 electrons which strike that barrier will move through that barrier, is what that probability tells us. And so, of course, when we talk about a current that's moving through, if you have one amp, that's a lot of electrons that's moving through. And so we would measure a definite signal of electrons moving through this barrier. In this lecture, we looked at two quantum mechanics problems, the finite potential well and tunneling. To solve these problems, we applied the boundary conditions that the wave function was continuous and the derivative of the wave function was continuous. The solution to these problems showed that quantum particles can exist in the walls that are meant to trap them. This leads to instances where they can escape or tunnel through even when they do not have sufficient energy to overcome the barrier.